The captain gets back on the mic and he says, ladies and gentlemen, the three words you never want to hear on a plane. Brace for impact. My heart is pounding out of my chest. My thoughts are going wild. I was like, this is it. This could be it for me. I was 26 years old at the time. The flood of emotions and the, the flood of thoughts was, my God, my mom, I can't even talk to my mom or my sister, or my grandparents right now. This is, they're gonna find out on the news. They're gonna have a knock on the door from the police. They're like, that's how I'm gonna go. It was the scariest, strangest, most wild 20 minutes of my life. This is the Human Future Podcast where we explore the intersection of technology and spirituality with some of the world's brightest minds. Together, we paint a vision of the desirable future and discuss the actionable steps to make that vision a reality. And now, without further ado, let's begin. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you, brother, for being here. Um, the, the word welcome is where we cut the, 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 the interview. This is where it starts. Um, this is uh, where my editor knows where to start the conversation. So thank you. Joe, for being here, excited for our conversation. Uh, maybe for the listeners to get a better idea who is in front of me, uh, share with them what you think would be useful for, for someone to understand who, who, who is here. Who are you, uh, Joe? Just Krill, a thanks for having me, brother. It's great to be here. The yep. Human Future Podcast, man. Right. This is great. I'm honored and grateful to be here with you, man. You're just a, an amazing friend and an amazing human. And uh, I love your mission. I love your purpose. Love what you're doing here, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. yeah. So um, Joe Metcalf, my journey, yeah. you know, has been one of a lot of challenge and a lot of a lot of um, growth over the last 10 years, I'd say. And, and I was in the real estate world, in the investment world. I was in the high pressured sales world. And uh, a couple events happened in my life where I um, started to think more about uh, life in a different way and, yeah. and think more about how I can lower stress in my life and how I can have more inner peace in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, that led to kind of like an inward and spiritual journey that uh, got me to where I am today. And um, it's been a journey of mindfulness. It's been a journey of how to become more present. It's been a journey of how to let go of stress and how to let go of anxiety mm -hmm. or how to, you know, cope with those, yeah. those challenges within. Right. And, um, yeah, today I'm running a community of entrepreneurs called Miami Made. It's a group of heart-centered, uh, growth-minded entrepreneurs that come together each month and support each other. And, mm -hmm. and I think the biggest theme of Miami Made and what I like to share with people is remembering how important human connection is in business mm -hmm. and to remember our sense of belonging in business. And uh, to do that with like-minded entrepreneurs is one of the most fulfilling things that I can do um, and be a part of. And I do that in the corporate space as well. I do corporate wellness events and I do corporate team building events. And I've led small masterminds with leadership teams, with sales reps and with customer service reps. And uh, it's kind of like full circle because I was in like that high pressured sales and, and uh, not corporate, but almost like corporate world. Yeah. And to bring more presence to the workplace is what mm -hmm. really matters to me. And it's what matters to me in my own personal life as well is to nice. um, come back to the present moment, that narrow, that narrow edge of mm -hmm. the present moment of now in everything that I do and to bring more awareness into my life versus being so attached to my thoughts and my uh, external challenges in my life. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's been a, a, a journey of mindfulness. It's been a journey of spiritual growth. And it's been a journey of how can I uh, continue to uh, aim for like the highest good when it comes to connecting with other humans and, yeah. and, and in the business world. So Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you mind moving the mic a little bit closer to your face? Sure. There, How's that's, that? That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I think a topic that is close to your heart, like uh, from some of the things that you've shared with me before and maybe some of the things that you intended to share, some uh, personal stories, is a, a big topic of mental health crisis that um, the society is going through. And uh, all of us have a fair share of our own mental crisis in some life situations. Um, I, maybe I'd like to go there and then you sharing 
uh, your experience with with that, and then we could maybe talk about solution after maybe f uh, framing the problem, a bigger problem. Uh, then after after you share your personal uh, part of that yeah. story, and then uh, we talk about the solution of the mental health. Yeah, health, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I had um, that's a great great question, and it's mm -hmm. a great topic because that's that's really the key is how can we uh, bring more uh, peace and harmony within ourselves, right? How can we uh, grow internally and, and be able to let go of some of those um, stressors in life, right? Because, you know, it's so funny. I was running yesterday, just like a quick side story. I was running yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in South Beach and, and on the beach and I stopped at the South Point Pier mm -hmm. and, you know, every, uh, uh, this was sunset hour. So okay. this was like 7 p.m. And every time I go to the pier, I, I, I look down in the water just to see if there's any you know, sea life. Yeah. And for some reason I, I, I didn't check yesterday. Um, so I started running back on the beach and I was like a quarter of a mile down. I was like, wait a second. No, something was in me to go back to the pier yeah. and, and, and be called to just look in, into the water. Mm -hmm. And I went back like another three or four minutes extra running, ran to the pier. Mm -hmm. The first thing I see is two beautiful, gigantic stingrays. All right. Like just, just flowing flowing in the water Beautiful. and then a minute later a gigantic manatee flowing floating in the water right mm -hmm. and uh, i just love the connection to intuition of being able to like mm -hmm. ah i there's something i'm missing right and i was able to go back and experience mm -hmm. something beautiful mm -hmm. but then as i was observing the the stingrays or manta rays whatever you're mm -hmm. calling them mm -hmm. um they, they were just such a grace to them yeah. there was such a, a beautiful flow to the way that they were swimming and it was like effortless. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that's what I want to work towards is, is this effortless flow, this natural flow of being one with life and being one with nature. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and animals have that, right. Mm -hmm. Cause they don't have the human brain where ego gets in the way and, and, and financial challenges get in the way and, and relationship challenges get in the way. All this human challenge, right, is 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 beautiful and it's crippling mm -hmm. because if we're not prepared and we're not able to uh, handle those challenges, we can get caught in negative thinking, we can get caught in lack, we can get caught in scarcity, and we can get caught into mental health challenges, right? Yep. But the moment we can flip and we can become present or we can work on our level of awareness, we can work on our level of presence and we can detach from past we can detach from future and we can walk as Eckhart Tolle one of my my virtual mentors says walk the razor's sharp edge of now uh, everything starts to become a little lighter everything starts to become a little bit easier right and I think that's the first step to to overcoming mental health challenges right uh it's a continual process right yeah. so that's just a Yep. A side note with that that yeah. that experience I had yesterday in nature on the beach. Um, back to me personally, just to kind of rewind and share my my mental health journey, if you will. I, I had mm -hmm. two major life experiences that kind of, you know, shook me to the core, if you will, Kirill. And the first one was um, I was on a business trip. I was working for this in real estate investment company and I was flying home from Memphis, Tennessee back to West Palm Beach at the time, I was living in Del Rey, mm -hmm. and we're halfway through the flight, cruising altitude, 30,000 feet in the air. I'm in the back of the plane, just hanging out. There's a TV, I'm watching the Yankees game, and uh, you know, half asleep, dozing off. I was probably hung over the night before from having drinks with the company at dinner last <laughs> the, the night before, and, and uh, um, all of a sudden I start to see like this condensation coming out of the cabin. And I'm like, is that air conditioning condensation? But it starts getting heavier. And then I'm like, I smell smoke. That's not air conditioning. Mm -hmm. That is smoke. There was a fire below our, our cabin, 30,000 feet in the air on a normal commercial flight, 200 people on board, Damn. Delta flight. The captain gets on the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, we understand that there is a fire below in the cabin below the, the plane. Mm -hmm. We are making an emergency landing at Tampa Bay Airport. We are starting our descent now. We'll, we'll arrive in 20 minutes. And I'm like, 
whoa, this is real. Mm -hmm. This is happening. Smoke's billowing into the cabin. The smoke alarms are going off. I'm in the back of the plane. It was the scariest, strangest, most wild 20 minutes of my life. The captain gets back on the mic and he says, ladies and gentlemen, the three words you never want to hear on a plane, brace for impact. He's like, put your hands on the seat in front of you, put your legs together and put your head down Hmm. and brace for impact. Damn. My heart is hounding out of my chest. My thoughts are going wild. I was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This could be it for me. I was 26 years old at the time Mm -hmm. or 27. And the the flood of emotions and the the flood of thoughts was, my God, my mom, I can't even talk to my mom or my sister, my grandparents right now. It's like, you know, and my girlfriend at the time, it was like, I can't talk to these people. This is, they're going to find out on the news. They're going to have a knock on the door from the police. And I was like, that's how I'm going to go. I was like, well, this is it. Like it was, it was the scariest moment of my life. My heart's racing, anxiety's happening. And I'm thinking to myself like, all right, uh, instinctual, maybe I just got to block my head in case there's a crash landing. How can I survive? Mm-hmm. But then it was just thoughts. And the back of the plane, there were some people crying up front. Yeah. The back of the plane was like, like a, a, in person, a live funeral. Everyone was just quiet, yeah. like kind of mourning Fuck. and yeah. scared. It was weird. Like yeah. Yeah. the lady next to me, like put the shade down. She starts praying. I put the shade right back up because I want to see if we're going to land on air or on, yeah. on water. It was, it was wild. And mm-hmm. um, my dad passed away like, you know, 10 years before. I was like, all right, well, you know, if there's an afterlife, maybe I'll get to meet my dad again. Like what's going to go on, right? All those thoughts are happening when you're in your 20s. And and it was just wild. But as we started to descend and we did a duck dive from like 30,000 feet to like 5,000 in a matter of like three or four minutes. So yeah. we're, we're going down Real quick. Quickly. Yeah. And, and the captain gets back on the mic. There's another plane coming by. Divert, divert, divert. It was Fuck. wild. Like that yeah. we, we messed up air traffic control with the emergency landing. Why did he have to tell you divert? Well, right? it was, he was telling another, another um, airplane that he, and he kept the, the mic on by mistake, by mistake. Fuck. And the whole, yeah. and the whole, the whole passenger, Shit. all the passengers oh, heard man. it. Yeah, dude. Cause he was also stressed. He was like, right, 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 yeah. right. But as we started to descend, the yeah. smoke started to dissipate. Yeah. So maybe he like opened up some kind of vent and the, the fire went out, but it yeah. started to dissipate, but we don't know if it's landing gear. Yeah. Like landing is still a question, right? So we yes. get closer and closer and closer and closer and we land perfectly smoothly firemen come onto the plane they get us off the plane it was so wild we get off we land everyone is hugging and high-fiving and crying it was like pandemonium and jubilation on that plane man and and i'll never forget it we we could have flown from tampa back to west palm beach we're like no thanks we'll rent a car (laughs) so we did you have uh, anxiety for for a while to get on the on the plane couldn't sure couldn't sleep for a week yeah had to get on a plane for a business trip like five days later Mm -hmm. so i went back on and and it was okay you know Mm -hmm. during takeoff and landing it was a little Mm nerve-wracking but you know your body just accustom um uh, acclimates again um so damn so from that experience a stronger sense of gratitude and appreciation for life started to develop within me and and also a a more of a a awareness of death and how real that is and you know when we're so young we feel like we're invincible in our 20s you know and and, um to bring that sense of hey this could happen at any time and life isn't guaranteed and we're not in control of that we're only in control of the present moment yeah and and what we can do with our time while we're healthy while we're alive and then there's like that stoic saying memento more right yeah, yeah. be mindful of death that became more of an important theme for me mm-hmm. um and, and that led me to one of my first turning points in my life which was writing mm-hmm. and 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 personal development mm-hmm. and i would start writing blogs my first ever blog post was about that plane landing experience mm-hmm. i was never creative before i was never a writer but that's what got me into, into writing and, and creativity was to um, 
write inspirational blogs yeah. or book reviews of, of books that made an impact on my life. Sure. Um, so yeah, that, that's one story. I'll just pause right there. But then there's an, another story that got me into like my mental health journey on a, mm-hmm. on a deeper level mm-hmm. a couple of years later. But I'll pause there if you have any comments on, yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, th- this is, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I've, I've heard uh, versions of it not as kind of uh, detailed and as uh, picturesque and like, yeah, w- wow, what a crazy experience that no one would want to wish for anyone else and uh, yeah the the amount of fear that was on that plane i can't even imagine <laughs> yeah i mean i'm sure most people were like i'm gonna fucking die like, yeah, this, is, yeah. this is the moment the, the <laughs> airline attendants Kirill, they yeah. were crying yeah they were crying they were they were running down the aisles they were yeah. crying you know when they say like in the beginning you know here are the exits yes here, here's the oxygen oxygen mess None mm. of that was going on, man. No, no, <laughs> there no, was no. there was no calm protocol. <laughs> yeah, shit, man. Yeah, um, yeah. This is uh, the 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 mental health crisis. Maybe it's it's not exactly related to the 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 kind of the pro- the big problem that I was intending to highlight. But this is a uh, definitely a very powerful story to share so so yeah definitely thank you for sharing it and the the second part uh, i think is more related to my mental original intention yeah 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 so the the first story kind of just woke me up to be like hey you know can't take anything for granted right like yeah. like like nothing is given right and we only in control of what we have so like to come back to gratitude to mm-hmm. be aware of you know that this that uh, uh, an old uh, old boss and, and mentor of mine said that the same practice, right? We're in the game today, right? So mm-hmm. let's let's make the most of it while we're in the game, while we're healthy and while we're alive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but I continued in the real estate and the investing world, and I was pressured, and there was a lot of lot of challenges with work over the next couple of years, right? So uh, and I wasn't taking care of myself, you know, I wasn't as healthy as I could have been, right? Mm-hmm. I was. In my mid twenties, I was partying a lot. I was yeah. drinking, drinking two, three yeah. nights a week. I was up late, wasn't eating healthy, right? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't taking care of myself. And I also wasn't taking care of my mental health, right? I wasn't checking in with myself there. And um, the pressure started to mount at work. I was doing a lot, right? I was managing a sales team. I was on the road, public speaking for this real estate in, in investment company. Mm-hmm. We were training people on how to do real estate. So I was on the road a couple times a month. Mm-hmm. And um, I was drinking a lot of caffeine as well at the time. And and um, I started to get these like kind of like tolerable anxiety attacks where yeah. like I would feel the raise in heart rate, like mm-hmm. the way it would manifest for me, anxiety and, and stress was nervous system malfunction yeah nervous system you know um um uh just yeah just very like shaky right and i would i would feel nervous mm-hmm. i would feel antisocial i would feel awkward around people or sometimes i would even have like a mini panic attack where my heart rate would would um kind of like go really fast my blood yeah. pressure would rise and i would just have to leave yep. somewhere and, and then i have to like splash water on my face and and breathe through it yep. and just fight my way through it um and i'll never forget it i was on stage speaking um in huntsville alabama and i was doing a presentation i've done like a hundred times mm-hmm. and i'm halfway through the presentation and all of a sudden in front of 70 investors and realtors i start to see spots I start to get dizzy and I get shortness of breath mm-hmm. and I have a full blown panic attack on stage wow. in front of 70 people. I had to sit down, pretend that I was, you know, on the wrong slide and I was just clicking through slides, catching my breath, drinking water. And I was able to shorten the presentation and just kind of force my way through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was, it was one of the most scary, awkward and challenging anxiety attacks that I've ever had. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. And I was like 27, 28 years old. I was like, something needs to change in my life fundamentally. Mm-hmm. I need to learn more about this mind-body connection. I need to learn more about mental health. I need to learn more about um, lowering stress. And at that point in time, I made a shift, Kirill, from mm-hmm. wanting to make money 
and impress people and chase success to eradicating stress Mm -hmm. and eradicating anxiety in my life and Mm -hmm. to feel to feel better within myself right to to have more inner peace in my life if you will right to have more peace of mind so i just started reading and researching i stumbled upon a meditation group um you know, at a local gym and I would just do like 10, 15 minute meditations. Yep. I started reading books about meditation, about mindfulness. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, I mentioned, or Eckhart Tolle, I, I mentioned him before, but the power of now, I, I would read and reread and reread and his book, The New Earth, and learning about how to observe ourself from a higher perspective, right? How to come from a sense of awareness first and then start to practice non-reaction or acceptance yeah. um, changed my life, fundamentally changed my life. And then from there, you know, one good habit begets more good habits. And I started eating healthier, started drinking less alcohol. I started getting better sleep. Um, so I was not living as much of a toxic life. Sure. So I think that that all those things kind of accumulate. And um, I think that awareness is is the key. Yeah, let me kind of uh, pause you there. Sure. So the anxiety that you started to experience at, at your job, uh, how common do you think that is uh, on in the workforce? Like how common do you, from your experience, from just um, observing other people or maybe guessing, how common do you think that is? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's more common than we think. Okay. I really do. I, I don't know what the percentage would be, yeah. but but I would say that a lot of people deal with it on some kind of level yes. and, and are not sure how to handle it or they think that that's just the way it is, right? Yeah. And and I want to make a, a, a very clear statement here too. It wasn't it wasn't my job or my industry per se. Yes. It was it was how I was handling myself. Okay. And it, it was how I was um, taking care of myself and not being aware of things, right? So I think that's important because, you know, that job gave me so many blessings too, from the relationships I right. had, the mentorships that I had, and and um, what I learned as a business person. And um, I just wasn't taking care of myself to handle the pressures, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, what do you think is the uh, a healthy amount of pressure that maybe in your situation, what would that, what would could that be? Yeah. To start. There. Yeah, that's a great question, and I I think about this a lot because. When I work with other companies or I work with high performers, yeah. there's a difference between stress yeah. and intensity, mm-hmm. right? And and I feel that in order to grow, mm-hmm. um, there needs to be a level of challenge in our lives, whether yes. it's in the office or whether that's in the job or whether that's in person. Yep. I feel like, you know, like again, another Latin saying, you know, we talked about memento mori, mm-hmm. it's, it's um, uh, you know, um, Per adversa ad astra. Okay. Like through adversity to the stars. Mm-hmm. Like like through adversity is how we grow mm-hmm. and is how we evolve spiritually. It's how yeah. we evolve mentally and emotionally, right? Mm-hmm. Now there's a, a balance to that because if we're not taking care of ourselves yes. and we're not we're not fully in communication with our coworkers or our, our boss about what we can and we can't handle, then we're gonna burn out. Right. And that's what we don't want. We don't want to, to burn out. We don't want to, to be in, in a stressed state where the, co- the cortisol is going to come in and, and affect our nervous mm-hmm. system and our bodies. Yeah. But if there's a, a, a level of, of inspired challenge mm-hmm. and there's a level of, of intensity, I think that's really valuable. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think there's a balance there. And it's sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes yeah. it's knowing the expectations within yourself. Yep. Right. And, and, also, how you're able to take care of yourself, you know, uh, when you're not in the office. Like, what I would tell people too is, when I started to succeed after that panic attack, it's because I started working harder on myself than I did on my job. Hmm. It didn't mean that I, you know, you know, was lazy at my job. It right. just meant I, my number one priority became me. Yeah. And once you do that, everything becomes easier, you know, within your career, within yeah. your work, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's something that comes up. Gr- growing up, have you had anxiety or like, um, su- uh, suicidal thoughts or any of that? Yeah. 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 Never, never su- suicidal f- thoughts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had anxiety before my, my real estate job and, and, uh, 
in my late teens and in my early 20s, like mm -hmm. uh, the last year of high school and pretty consistently through college, mm -hmm. um, I would get anxiety attacks. It was more like social anxiety where sure. I would feel this rush of nervousness yep. within me and mm -hmm. it, it manifested in my nervous system and this mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason too, uh, I it was it was smoking marijuana like triggered this in me at mm. some point. Like I would react to it mm -hmm. for years. I would be fine with it. Yeah. But then I eventually started getting this reaction of of paranoia. Yeah. That that turned into anxiety, mm -hmm. and that's what kind of sparked it in my my twenty my teen late teens early twenties. So I had a history of it, you know, mm -hmm. before that real estate job. So that's a great question. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's the way my body would react. I'm just trying to find commonalities and trying to pinpoint a bigger problem. Uh, not only, I mean, your story is, de is definitely an important one and it contributes to the uh, the overarching story of, you know, Western society because I think Western society definitely has a lot more, that problem is a lot more uh, exposed than, let's say, in society where I grew up. Uh, I, th I think anxiety is there, but it's a different type of problems that you're dealing with on the hierarchy of pyramid Maslow, right? Um, we are living in the society where I'm, where I grew up, Belarus, uh, and many other places in the world. You're, you're more concerned about your survival, um, food, shelter type things. And in Western world, for the most part, those, those uh, needs are met. And then you're, you're not to say that it, the life becomes easier. In fact, I would I would argue the life becomes a lot harder uh, because, you know, it, it's all in our, the whole life experience is all in our head. And the more grounded we are, let's say if we have physical challenges, uh, it almost like distracts us from being in our mind too, too mm. much. Uh, and so we're just handling the physical challenges that we are capable of handling. But once those are all taken care of, now it's just your mind. And um, oftentimes we're not in the full control of what happens in, in your mind. And it could really be uh, like a, a much bigger challenge, yeah. right? And so I'm trying to pinpoint from your perspective, maybe you, you see um, something that, you know, growing up here in, in the Western world, what is that biggest kind of essence of that challenge? And how can we look at it and how can we address it, become more aware of it? Like, why is that happening here? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a great point. And, and um, yeah, it's funny because people have different scales based on where they, they grew up and, and what stress means to them. And, and um, when you have certain privileges or freedoms, yeah. you, you don't have to worry about certain things and then other problems come up, right? Yes. Um, yeah. So, so and you might not have an answer. Yeah. Uh, and know, repeat the question yeah. one more time. Crystallize yeah, like, that question. I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint the uh, some of the core reasons for a mental health problem that you see um, maybe related what you've experienced in your life and maybe you see in others uh, being born here and grew up here. Um, you, you're a little bit closer to that problem. Um, yeah. So I wanted to see if maybe you have a perspective there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think that that's, that's definitely a key component. The fact that we have a lot of things that are, are easier in terms of, of uh, way of living here, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we have uh, access to, to certain things that we can just um, not have to worry about, right? So, so we can get in, into our heads a lot. And I, I think that's the key is, mm -hmm. is we can get caught in, in, into this, this sense of comparison, mm -hmm. we can get we can get caught up in this sense of complaining. We can get caught up in this sense of like, um, I need more, mm -hmm. right? And and these are all kind of like the the effects of like Western society and yeah. and like um, you know, perpetual capitalism where it's like too much growth, right? And and there's not enough community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think part of the core problem with this mental health thing is. Yep is this on a grand scale yep. it's it's this um idea that we're 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 continuing to individualize yeah and we're continuing to create separation mm -hmm. and we're continuing to compare and try to level up this one upmanship on on right. people through you know uh the the competition and, and competition's great mm -hmm. but if you get so caught up in 
in comparison, yes. right? Like if right. you compare, right. you right. despair, right. man. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, 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 exactly. You know, if you get caught up in comparison, if you get caught up in complaining because you don't have enough, yeah. I think people equate in Western society, in American society with, I, I don't have enough, yeah. so I am not enough. And I think that's that's something that needs to be fundamentally fixed. And and that's a spiritual journey, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel that that it, it's always gonna come back to our our level of consciousness mm -hmm. and our evolution internally, right? And and that's where the healing can come from this mental health crisis, right? Because you know, if we're always externally focused, yeah. you know, that's that's going to lead to challenges, right? And then, you know, with the scrolling lifestyle and social media, it's yeah. like, it's like always right in front of us. We have to have the next best thing or yeah. this next influencer is like mm -hmm. impressive. So I got to act like that person, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's turning into a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're, we're like zombies scrolling all the time, yeah. right? And, and it's, it's on comparison. It's on individuality. It's on sense of division. Mm -hmm. And then there's so many different aspects of that. When you look at politics, when you look at, you know, different topics in, in, in the, the, the world we're living in, like there's, there's social media promoting different sides of things that create yeah. separation, right? So if we come back to that level of consciousness and spiritual journey within and, and we, we look at, Hey, I am enough. Yeah. Right who I am as a human being, I am enough. And I can tap back into the present moment, right? Where um, you're not just, the present moment is not just some stepping stone mm -hmm. or some means to the end to get yeah. to some future, some higher place, right? Yeah. That's when you can act like that stingray or that manatee that's just flowing. Yeah. And that's when you can be in this state of flow. And I think that's when you can find more inner peace. And this is a constant battle for me. Like I'm still a huge work in progress right i yeah. i can get caught between ego and you know and and you know thoughts and and you know i'm not enough or i'm complaining about something versus mm -hmm. being in in my awareness and in my higher consciousness so i think that's that's the challenge that we have as society to to help support our mental health is mm -hmm. is is coming back to gratitude coming back to higher awareness and coming back to our our oneness and our wholeness and our spirituality, whatever that spirituality is for, yeah. for people, I think that's, that's really what's going to help people overcome mental health. And, and there's so many different ways and vehicles yeah. to do that. There's therapy, there's, there's breath work, there's meditation, yeah. you know, there's community, just human connection does that. Right. Yeah. So I think all these components can support better mental health in, in Western society. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what do you think uh, are the most effective ways of battling uh, or transcending this issue? I mean, you've mentioned some of them. Uh, maybe there's no one solution and not maybe, it's for sure. There's usually n not one solution that just solves uh, a problem of, of such a great scale. It's uh, smaller little approaches uh, tackling sub-problems, sub-communities, sub like uh situations uh i do see though there is leverage that we can use one of which is technology uh and the other one is media um both of which could be um multiplied and replicated uh infinitely without um spending more resources so for mm. example to feed the whole population it will require food for everyone like a physical you can't just multiply an apple uh infinite amount of times and uh for free right that's why that problem is much harder uh, mm -hmm. to do but uh using um exponential te technologies and media uh that the cost of duplicating it and and producing it again is zero mm. um gives us a new opportunity that we've never had before to tackle bigger problems in the world. Uh, and, and that's why I'm a big proponent of conscious use of technology and, and really in, put uh, our conscious intents uh, into what do we create with this powerful tool and how do we... Uh, and so even, let's say, talking about issues like that and spreading them using media 
is one powerful way. And then also figuring out how do you now utilize more technology of automate. So a lot of people would say, you know, um, automations and like you're basically stripping life out of out of human experience. And I say, you know, if you consciously utilize those tools, they could bring much more good than than bad. And so in the automation scenario, um, I'm always thinking about how do I automate as much as possible in the production of experience like this, where we talking about those issues uh, that bring it to the the maximum. Imagine that we, uh, this is like a, a megaphone where, you know, all of your channels are out there broadcasting your, cha- uh, your, your messages and they are optimized for, you really deeply understanding what drives people, how to get their attention mm. uh, using science, using technology, um, and, but for good, not to, um, you know, lie or not to like uh, promote some kind of a hidden agenda, but for um, upbringing humanity. And so you use all of those tools that have been used kind of against us in a way to sell stuff to us, right? To sell stuff we don't need or mm-hmm. to prove that we're good enough, um, right? Or that, that we're cool enough. Right. And use, utilize those same techniques to blast the world with this uh, positivity, this um, energy of change in, into a more conscious society. I love that, man. And, you know. and I, I couldn't agree more. I, I mean, it, it, it's all based on our, our level of consciousness. And as we grow with technology and social media, that, that's not going away. That's yeah. part of our world. Right. And as AI starts to really take the forefront here mm-hmm. and be a part of our world as well, it's going to be a direct mirror mm-hmm. of our level of consciousness. And social media and technology are amazing forces for good as long as the creators are being conscious right and and the 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 consumers are being conscious of how they consume right yeah and then it becomes a beautiful way to to spread powerful powerful messages mm-hmm. to the world right like this is this is a big game changer right sure. a- and I, I couldn't agree more is like we can we can aim for the highest good and amplify that right exactly. with all of our heart through technology mm-hmm. and through through media and, and that's a really really special opportunity like what you're doing here human future podcast is yep. a, is a perfect example and you know we can amplify the 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 right messages to the world and and all it takes is one message just like when someone reads a book like that can change so- someone's life just the way that Eckhart Tolle's books changed me one podcast, one video can change someone's life completely, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's what's gonna gonna change the world, right? It is yeah. is the 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 micro expanding to the macro, and and I would just I would add too is, is is when we are consuming news and when we're consuming information and when we're consuming external challenges, right? It's great to take a step back and get altitude and and say. Okay, how am I contributing to this this energy? Hmm. Right? A- am I complaining about it? Am I am I um, letting this become my identity? Yeah. Right. Like I think that's really important. And that's where awareness comes in, right? Versus just blindly being sucked into the 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 ego side of things, right? Mm-hmm. So it's um it takes like like a, a diligent discernment and a diligent awareness, right? Yeah. How we uh, um, express ourselves through media and how we consume, consume media. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm very hopeful, like, like just if you wanted to jump into the tech stuff, but like, I'm very yeah. hopeful about the, the, the prospects of how we can really change the world through technology and, and through innovation mm-hmm. and through, um, the, the, the intelligence that we have as humans combined with technology is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, but but I also feel like it's it's a it's a spiritual journey as well. And and mm-hmm. I know that you always cr- intersect spirituality with technology. Yes. I truly believe that AI and technology is going to become essentially like another being at some point. Yeah. Like it's going to be like like 
two groups of humans interacting for the first time, like, mm. you know, thousands of years ago and, and, mm. and there's challenges and then there's cohesion and then there's, there's relationship yep. and then there's community. Uh, I think it's going to be like another being at some point. Totally. Right. And, and, and golden rule, right. Treat others as you want to be treated. Right. Yep. There's, there's a, a level of just basic mm -hmm. human, um, relationship that needs to be sure. thought about with technology mm -hmm. right again it's it's going to, going to be a mirror of our own consciousness man I, I i spent a lot of time thinking about like i mean hence the the human future podcast the future is a is a big topic for me i like to think about where it's all headed and what can i do today to align myself uh into the scenarios that that are desirable let's say there are a whole kinds of a whole range of probabilities of what could happen in the future and um, we get to decide which track are we choosing even if uh, for the majority that might be a less likely scenario or um, you say oh you're too optimistic and um, you, you're just you know, you're choosing the track that's le less likely to happen. Um, it, you know, anyway, that that's a kind of a si side thing. What I wanted to mention is uh, AI and what I think about what would be the ideal type of AI that humans will benefit the most. And a few days ago, I was thinking about when you have some kind of like a master, which I actually haven't really had in my life, but I could only guess what that would feel like, some kind of guru or a master or someone who is much more tapped into the truth of reality. They, they don't even have to um, tell you what they think based on their experience. They channel the truth to you. They're the, they're the walking channel to the source of truth you, you need an, a, some kind of message advice they don't even think about it they just say it to you and this is this is the mm. the truth for you mm. uh, and so i think if we optimize our ai in, in fact that's what uh, elon musk is at least what he's saying he's trying to accomplish with his grok ai is the one that's uh seeking the truth as mm. cl being as close to the truth as possible mm. and i think that's the very much the right approach um obviously what um the what does it mean to be closer to the truth is like a up to interpretation uh but at least conceptually the closer ai to the actual truth of how things work in the physical world and the in the spiritual world uh the more service it will create for humankind yeah i love that yeah. i love that analogy and i love that that thought process like mm -hmm. like imagine if if ai embraced the 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 essence mm -hmm. behind the most truthful parts of the bible or the Tao Te ching yeah. or the hindu scriptures or the 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 Buddhist scriptures, right, mm -hmm. right, or the Quran, like the the purest, yeah. the purest sense of oneness that you feel from those stories, mm -hmm. right. And okay, like without getting too technical and without getting too literal, mm -hmm. thinking more of the literary sense of of religions and the literary sense. What's the messaging? What's the the energy? What's the vibration? of thousands of years of those books teaching oneness, presence, acceptance, love, abundance, truth. Yep. Imagine that's distilled within AI and they operate from that place yep. and and we're working in in harmony mm. with humans just like, you know, a bee operates operates in harmony with the flower. Yeah. yeah you know exactly. what I mean? Like I I think that's where I see such an optimistic view of of the way that civilization is going for sure um yeah man uh and and the other thing about the truth that i recognized i think i journaled about it this morning the closer you are uh 
so let's say we all have a certain framework of how the world works. We, we have a certain filter maybe at, through which we look at the world, certain things we don't see and don't perceive. But we, we have a certain understanding what is truth, how, let's say, if you, you know, throw an apple, it will fall. That's part of that truth um, or it's true enough to be useful. Mm. Um, and so we have a certain, all of us have a, an approximation of truth that's mm. helpful for us to act on the world. Mm. And I recognize that the, the closer we are to the truth of reality, the more manifestation power we have. Mm. We all have desires of what we would like to achieve. And m most people are not achieving them because they're like, they're just don't fully understand how reality works. They try to accomplish X and they think they need to do X and Y, but it doesn't work because they're off on the truth. Like mm. they're off on um, how it actually all works. Um, and, and so another reason why uh, optimizing AI for the closeness to the, the truth, like helping, imagine you have an advisor by your side at all times uh, that is aware of what your deep desires and and wishes and your your dharma why you here you you maybe have done some deep reflection and you now have a certain understanding of why you here and with ai knowing that that's your goal you could um give you advice when you need it when you ask for it in any situation uh because knowing that it's let's say all knowing and much closer to the truth as any other human it will give you one of the best advices in in a given situation yeah um, yeah i love that man that, that's yeah. that's powerful to think about mm -hmm. and and um i love that on the manifestation as well it's mm -hmm. like i feel like and, and this is me i'm talking to myself as i say this like mm -hmm. i can block myself from being a channel yeah. and just being able to be in that flow and that abundant state because i'm i'm tight I'm tense. There's something locked within me. I'm not letting the currency of life flow in, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I'm I'm caught in 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 my own self talk, my own limiting beliefs, my own um, conditioned patterns that that are energetic blocks, and and the flow of energy can't flow in. Right? It's mm -hmm. it's more about uh, allowing, you know. Part of part of manifestation is allowing, right? And yes. and knowing that that's part of truth is is that. There's this, there's this divine flow of, of, um, giving and receiving, right? Mm. And, um, to have AI tuned in and tapped into that is a really exciting idea. Yeah. Uh, how do you, how do you define truth? Like what, mm. what, what, uh, comes up for you when you hear the word truth? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. To me, truth is something that is, there, there is a um, an interpretation of the behavior of the universe. Uh, there's conceptually, we say, oh, if you do this, then this happens. Uh, that's like a theory behind it. And the closer that is to the actual thing, what happens if you really do the the action? Um, the closer it is to the actual action, the closer it is to be true. Mm. Uh, so it, mm. it describes what truth is. Truth is basically, uh, it's it's like a map. Um, you look at the map and you say, oh, if we go five miles over here, there will be a church. Right. Um, and, and so the closer that is to reality of you walking five miles, the, cl the closer that map is to, to be a true true map. Right. Like a, a not like a inaccurate map. Right, right. There's a... Yeah. Uh, um success and and abundance and and love they leave clues right they're, mm. they're they're all it's all part of like um you know our friend adam roa talks about like there's mm. there's codes behind the 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 physical reality right there's mm. there's invisible codes behind the 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 visual scene that we see just mm. like you know behind your your phone yes there's all these chips and this these data and these these codes going on these yes. ones and zeros going on uh, behind the scenes of your screen, right? Mm -hmm. And and I feel like that's the real thing. That's what's happening in real life as well. There's these codes of truth that mm. enable your external reflection to to be more aligned with whatever your truth is, what your 
what you're coding on the inside, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's really, there's something really profound to that, right? There's, there's a map um, that's getting you to something that's going to show you truth. Yep. Um, yeah, I love thinking about this. It, it's, yeah, yeah for, for me, I, I, I tend to come back to this word a lot. I think that there's so much power behind presence. Mm. And I, I think that presence and, 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 and oneness have this close link, right? Where you're, you're present, you're, you're not in your mind. You're, yeah. you're actually in this state of, of oneness. You're in this state of timelessness, uh, timelessness. Yes. Um, and you're in this state of, of eternity. Right. And, and I think that is really powerful to tap into this. And again, I'm a work in progress. I, I, yeah. I have moments of this, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. I have moments of this, but, but I think it's, it's so powerful when we can get out of our mind yes. and, and not be thinking. Right. And, and it's like this false sense of self that we have when we identify too much with the content of our mind, too much yes. with the content of our thoughts versus just observing without judgment, mm. without reaction, being present. And I, I think from there, you start to see truth. You start to see the connection of all things. Yeah. You start to see this oneness, this beautiful oneness of the nature around us in each human when you can look them in the eye and you, yes. can, you, can, you have a spiritual encounter with them when you're mm -hmm. having a conversation. And, and I think that's, that's where love comes through. I yeah. think that's where, where you know, lower stress comes through. That's yep. where the mental health starts to heal. And I, I think that that's truth for me is coming out of, out of thoughts and out of past and future mm -hmm. and coming into presence. Yeah. And then from there, the love can really flourish in, and truth can really just show itself mm -hmm. when we're present. And, and you know, the, the quickest way to get there, back to your original question before yeah. the AI, yeah, yeah, yeah. like what's one thing that I, I do? And, and it's the constant reminder of the present moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and that happens through the breath. Yeah. And let's take a deep breath right now. The secret to life, it's, it's right under our nose. Yeah. <laughs> it's right under our nose, yeah. the breath. And, and if you think about this, Kirill, What's the one thing that you've done since you were born mm. in every single present moment right. you were alive? Yeah, you, you're breathing. You're yeah. breathing. Yeah. In every single present moment. So I've, I've come to this, this terminology where I mm -hmm. equate breath with the present moment. Mm -hmm. Breath is equivalent to the present moment because... It's the only thing you're doing in every single present moment. Mm -hmm. You're not sleeping in every single present moment. You're not walking in every single present moment. Yeah. But you're breathing in every single present moment. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and it, this is in our language too. I just was in Hawaii a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and aloha means presence, breath. Mm -hmm. Alo means presence, and ha means breath in the Polynesian language. Mm -hmm. And I just love that. And, mm -hmm. and I've said this to myself too, is, is there's so much more to breath than meets the lungs. And there's so much more to life that than meets the eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, so, there's something spiritual about our breath and there's something so much more going on in life behind the scenes, that coding we were talking about, that mm -hmm. map, mm -hmm. that truth behind just the physical 3D reality. So I like to connect those two things and my conversation about truth starts, starts from there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, yeah. Um, uh, there's, um, infinite amount of directions, uh, we can take it, but I think this might be also a great place for us to maybe start wrapping up this conversation and then, uh, giving you also a space to maybe share any lost thoughts, uh, that you would like to share with, those who are still listening, uh, thank you for those who are still around and um, not being bored by our conversation. Um, so yeah, how maybe how can people find you? Uh, any last advice, thoughts that yeah. that you would like to share? Yeah, I um, I appreciate you, Kirill. I just want to acknowledge you for for this space and and 
your mission and your energy, man. It's just uh, it's an honor to to know you and to have you as a friend. And I'm grateful for you, brother. And um, thank you. Same. My, mm-hmm. thank you. I'm my, very grateful for you as well, brother. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. My uh, my advice is is to is to be kind. You know, do something. Do something nice for someone and mm-hmm. and uh spread some light and 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 love and and uh um with all your heart just uh aim for the highest good in your life whatever that means mm-hmm. and i think that's gonna lead you to truth and uh i'll leave it at that you know uh, again you can you can follow me on social media handles joe metcalf with an e at the end of metcalf um uh, miami made org is the entrepreneur organization on ig um I wrote a book called The Inner Peace Experiment, which was um, something that that was like my my journey when I traveled the world after my real estate career for two years. And I, I, I went from stressed out businessman to someone that wanted more inner peace and less stress in, in, in my life. So you can check out that on Amazon, uh, The Inner Peace Experiment. And um, and yeah, just uh, uh, grateful for you, brother. And, and this is this has been a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah so uh, I'll stop here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And um excited for releasing this episode and for many more to come. Love it, man. Keep All it right. going, brother. Keep it going. Okay. <laughs> Cheers.